TLC. Are you ready to worship? We are so excited that you're here in the building and you're watching or worshiping at home rather. And so as we gather today, we just want you to know that God is a man of his word. He's consistent, he's faithful. So wherever you are, we just invite you in this moment to just tune in and focus your eyes on God. We're gonna worship and praise him today, all right? All right.
the thing that I've been praying for. If you said it, we believe. Because yeah. you're a man of your word. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. How many know he's a man of his word? Let's read some scripture. Isaiah 41, 17 through 20 says, When the poor and needy search for water and there is none, and their tongues are parched from thirst. Then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will open up rivers for them on high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will follow, will flow across the perched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert, cedar, Acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means that it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who created it. And so as the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the children, children of Israel and, and he's telling them what the Lord is, is going to do and he's going to protect and he's going to provide us with a new covenant, we are the children of God. And so we can take these words, the he comes and he flows as a river to the poor and needy. So if you have a poor and needy place in your heart or something going on, we can rest and know that he, he is going to do what his word says. He's gonna go into those dry and barren deserts and he's gonna, and he's gonna birth forth the rivers. So God, even, as we are right now in 21 days of prayer, fasting and seeking you and, and turning our eyes closer to you and not worried so much about the cares of this world, God, I pray that you, Lord, would give us a hunger, a greater hunger, a greater thirst, God. And those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord, they will be satisfied, God. So wherever you are, can you just lift your hands and just say, God, I just want to hunger and thirst for you more. We surrender, God. Thank you, Jesus.
the Lord today. God, we need you. We thank you, Lord, that you are a promise keeper. We thank you, God, that if we thirst for you, God, you will satisfy. And we thank you, Jesus, for your promises. Thank you, Lord.
16 and 8 it says I know the Lord is always with me and I will not be shaken because he is beside me and the part of the scripture that really got to me is that I know and sometimes we need to tell ourselves that I know see the part of the scripture about God being with us is constant God is always faithful to us that is constant. The one thing that needs to be constant in our hearts is the I know. I know that God is with me. He is always faithful. He is always beside me. So God, we thank you, oh God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for being beside us, oh God. We thank you that we will not be shaken because you are always there. We love you and we praise you, oh God. We magnify your holy name, oh God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. As you take your seats, greet your neighbor. Uh, what did they say, air high five or Holy Ghost bumper or something to that effect? Humble bow. Humble bow. Thanks. All right. Well, we thank you for God. We thank you all for being here. We thank you for you all that are watching online at home. We know that you have many options when it comes to church, when you choose to be here with CLC, and we thank you for that. Um, if you are new here, we welcome you. Uh, yes. Uh, if you are new here, um, text WELCOME to 708-998-4516. We want to connect with you. We want to share more things about CLC with you. We want to get to know who you are. Um, so text, text WELCOME to 708-998-4516. Uh, as we continue with our sermon series, ME 2.0 has been awesome and dynamic, and we um, can't wait for the next portion of the series. Um, so as we get ready, pay attention to the screens. Thank you. When to walk through the Bible, it's making me hungry to read the Bible because it was broken all the way down. Now I'm going to go home and read and fill in the blanks. You are able to learn in the period of about two church services the entirety of the Old Testament. I don't know of another way that I can cram as much information uh, and narrative and excitement about the Old Testament in just such a short period of time. It's a, a three-hour commitment, which is not very long. It's something that you will be benefit you the rest of your life. Walk through the Bible shows me what the Bible is really all about. I've taken a college course in Old Testament history and never before have I seen it explained or taught this way. I love every minute of it. You're learning and you're having fun at the same time. You don't even realize the time has passed by because you're so into God's Word. The same God that was active in the pages of Scripture is continuing to write that same story in my life. Everybody needs to know God's Word. We all need a deeper relationship with God. And walk through the Bible can get you there. There's really no good reason to miss it. It's very exciting. If you miss this, you're going to miss a lot. 
couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, that's Saturday morning, February the 6th. And as I mentioned last week, uh, we've decided to waive any fees or charges. And uh, we want everybody at CLC to be a part of this. Uh, as is often the case, I kind of messed up the announcement last week. And so uh, even if you registered last week, you need to register again. And here's why. There's actually three different registrations. One is for adults who plan to be in the room to experience this live. Um, and then also, I didn't even mention to you last week, but we're also having a separate session for our elementary age children, grades one through five, uh, I think that's so terrific that they're going to learn the Word and, and be uh, motivated to get into their Bibles as well. And so there's a separate registration for children only for, from grades one through five. If they're sixth grade and up, they can sit in with the adults. And then the third registration option is for those of you that are going to experience this online at your home or wherever, uh, you're going to be a part of it. So uh, that's, that's the different options for registration. And uh, Carlton will give you the instructions, the website and all of that. But I really want to encourage everyone to be a part of it. It's going to be a terrific uh, boost, uh, not only to your understanding of Scripture, but it's kind of the kickoff for the six weeks through the Old Testament that we're going to do here on Sunday mornings as well as in our life groups uh, this next season. So, good morning, CLC. Good morning. It's great to see those of you that have joined us, and I welcome all of you. I add my welcome to Carlton's uh, for all of you that are joining us online, wherever you may be, at home or in a coffee shop or driving down the road for that matter. I hope you're only listening if you are the driver and not, not to watching as well. But we're going to dive into week number three, if you, uh, if you were here last week, if you were a part of the service, then, then uh, you know we started talking about habits. And uh, it was really interesting to me, something I'd not thought of before, that uh, whether you are a successful person or an unsuccessful person, uh, you probably have similar goals, maybe the same goals. Uh, we all want something uh, to do with our health. We want to be in better shape. You know, maybe lose some weight, whatever it is. Uh, maybe your finances, you've, you've got a desire, maybe a goal to get debt-free in 2021. Uh, relationships, your marriage, your friendships uh, is another area of goals. And, of course, uh, for Christians, we have goals that we want to get closer to the Lord spiritually. So your goal may be to read through the Bible this year or to pray a certain, uh, certain uh, amount of time each day. Those are, those are the goals that we have. But as, as uh, James Clear mentioned in his book, Atomic Habits, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. That makes so much sense, and, and I hope that you did get to be a part of that last week, but if you didn't, you can still watch it on, uh, online as well. Uh, but here's, here's the thing. I'm convinced that everybody in the room and everybody listening to me online right now, you, you all have a system. You have habits, okay? They may not be good habits or good systems. You know, maybe, maybe your system is to hit the snooze button four or five times before you finally get out of bed. You know? And then because you're running late, you kick the dog, and it's too late to have breakfast. And, and uh, you, know, you, you grab a shower, and you're off to work. You're driving like a maniac. You're putting on your makeup at every stop sign. You know? uh, all of that only to get to the job, and now you're grumpy because of the way the day has started, and you're, you're, not, uh, you're not in a good mood with anybody that you interact with all day long and uh, you come home at night and pull through the drive through of a fast food restaurant because you don't even want to feel like cooking and uh, then you veg out in front of uh, uh, Netflix and go to bed and start all over again. That's not a very good system, but that's the system that some people have. And uh, uh, the thing is, if you want to if you want to adopt some new habits, that's really what we've been talking about. In order to be a better you, a, a me 2.0 in this year of 2021, um, you've got to start those new habits. But the question is, and I've heard this so many times from so many different people, where am I going to find time, Pastor? I don't have time to, to start some new habits or to take on some new uh, patterns. Uh, and so I want to help you today. That's really going to be our focus. Where am I going to find the time? And I probably should warn you, first of all, you don't find time. You make time for those things that are important, those goals that are important to you. I want to read uh, from Romans chapter number 13, 
Uh, if, you, if you don't have your Bibles with you, actually I'm reading from the message translation. We'll get it on the screen for you. Paul says, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted. I, boy, you can stop right there. Uh, how many of you feel like you are absorbed and exhausted? Already? You don't have to raise your hand, but I mean, that's, that's probably a pretty good description for, for a lot of us. He said, don't get that way. Don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. I want to stop right there and, and, and just dwell on that for a second because this is a truth that's important for us to understand that salvation work or salvation is actually uh, in three tenses. Three tenses. Past present, and future. All of them are part of the salvation work that God is up to. In other words, I was saved. For me, I was saved back in 1965. Some of you, many of you weren't even born yet. I was saved in 1965 when I placed all of my trust in Jesus and gave my life to him, I was saved. I was as saved then probably as I ever will be as far as that goes. It's what the Bible refers to as justification. And a simple way to understand what justification is all about is that when I believed on Jesus, when I got saved in 1965, it was just as if I had never sinned as far as God was concerned. All of my past was wiped out. I'm waiting for the hallelujahs, thank you, Jesus, and, and shouts of praise. You know, all of, all of my sins were wiped away. I was saved. But I've got to be honest and tell you, ever since that time, including right now today, I am being saved. Okay? Because even though I was saved and justified back in 1965, there's still a whole lot of stuff in me that God has to work out and work in, <laughs> probably more working in than working out. Are you with me? And so I am being saved. That's what the Bible calls sanctification. I am being sanctified as I surrender more and more of myself to him, as I grow in him, as I learn about him, I am being sanctified, present tense. You are being saved. And then... The, the future tense is that someday I shall be saved. You say, aren't you already saved? Well, I'm saved. I'm saved in the past. I'm saved in the present right now. But there's still another measure. I'm going to be saved when Jesus comes for us or when I go by way of the grave and I get my glorified body. That's, I've, I'm justified, I'm sanctified, and I'm also going to be glorified. Chris and I were talking one day this week over breakfast, and, and uh, she said, you know, all of these pains, all of these problems that she's had this year, or well, in 2020, maybe I should say, and she was, she was feeling those pains that day, and she said, I'm ready for my new body. And I looked at her, and I said, well, babe, the only way you're going to get that is to be glorified with Jesus in heaven, and I'm not willing to let go of you quite yet, so uh, you're not going to get your new body just now. Okay, but someday we will. Is there anybody like me and like Chris? It's probably the older folks in the crowd. Anybody that's looking forward to having a new body? Yes. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Okay, I dropped off at uh, God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation he worked, he began, excuse me, when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute, must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around and dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. You ever said that to your kids? God's saying it to all of us. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger waiting until the very last minute Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about 
drop microphone, exit stage left. I mean, that is a, that is a powerful passage of Scripture that describes the work that he wants to do in us. And I would say as believers, we cannot afford slack habits. God has a purpose in our lives, and it's not for us to perform poorly on the job and binge Netflix by night. That's not, that's not his plan for us. But those day-to-day -day obligations that Paul mentioned there are real. And if we're going to adopt new systems or new habits to change and be able to reach our goals, the question is, when are we going to find the time? Or scratch that. When are we going to make the time to do that? And the title of today's message is Evening and Morning because I think that's when we will make time. Uh, those two words, evening and morning, are listed together or found together 40 times in the Bible. And I'm not going to read. I, I looked up every one of those 40 times as I was preparing this, and I'm not going to read them all to you. Other than my text, the only one that, that even spoke to me was uh, in the book of Numbers, I believe it is, when the Bible said that it was raining donuts from the sky on the children of Israel. I mean, that's not the Bible word. The Bible word is manna was was coming down out of the sky, but the Bible says it was made out of bread and it, it tasted like honey. What does that sound like to you? Krispy Kremes coming out of the sky, you know? And, and they had Krispy Kremes every morning and they had meat every evening. And can you tell that we're in a fast right now? You know, uh, this is day, what are we, day 15, I guess now, of a 21-day fast. And so that was probably why it was on my mind. But, but uh, here's, here's the passage that I do want to read from Genesis chapter 1. If you want to read through the Bible, this is where you start, okay? Chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness... God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Here it is finally. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Did something strike you as being different in that last line? You know, I think when we think about it, we usually think of the morning and the evening would be the day. In fact, Technically speaking, the day begins at midnight. I've got a little, in fact, I didn't do it. I, I did something that you would not have enjoyed at all, but we've got a great creative team here, and they helped me to, to get a better illustration. Can we, there we go. Uh, so technically, the day starts at midnight. You know that already, right? That's when we turn over the, the calendar to a new day. Uh, but that's not how it was for the Jewish people, not only in the Old Testament, but to this day, they regard a day as starting at sundown, okay? So uh, sundown right now in, uh, in Chicago is uh, 4.30 p.m. That's the average. So, so their day, the Jewish day, starts at sunset, and it would go for, in our case, in Chicago, it would go for almost 15 hours until we get to sunrise about 7.30 in the morning, okay? That's, that's how theirs was. They counted a day from sundown to sundown, actually. Uh, the evening followed by the morning. Uh, and as I said, in Chicago, that's, that's about 4.30 at night, sundown to about 7.30 in the morning, sunrise. Roughly 15 hours, if you live here, 15 hours for us to focus on. Now, we've got another illustration, if you'll, if you'll give me that next slide. Uh, the typical work day, and obviously this is not going to apply to everybody in the room or everybody that's watching online. You'll have to make your own adjustments, but I just use an average work day starting at 8 o'clock in the morning and going until 5 o'clock in the evening. Uh, that's why it's in the lighter here. Not only is that daylight, but that's the period of time that most of us think of as our work day. 
The problem with that is that those nine hours of our work day, and yours, and don't, don't argue with me afterwards and say, Pastor, I work 11 hours or I work 12. I, I understand that. I put in more than nine hours most days too. I'm just, I'm just giving an average for an illustration for you, okay? Uh, but, but that's the, the period of time that we actually have the least control over. You know, because somebody else dictates what goes on during those nine hours. That's, that's the period of time when, you know, we've got to get the kids to school and we've got to be at work and we've got to be in meetings and we've got doctor's appointments. They have to fit in that period of time and the post office is only open during that period of time, you know. So we have to govern our lives by, by that nine hours or so. And, and it's the craziest part of our day. Everything has to fit there. Uh, we focus and we push everything towards that when really we n are often neglecting the 15 hours that has the most potential when it comes to affecting the kind of life that we're living. I hope that makes sense to you. And so what I'm going to recommend to you, if you want to start some new habits, if you really want to be new and improved, me 2.0 in 2021, I would encourage you, instead of thinking about morning to evening like we always grew up thinking about, why don't you focus on the Hebrew way, the Jewish way of focusing on the evening to the morning? Because if we anchor the evening and we do there what we really are supposed to do there, and if we anchor those morning hours the way God intended, then in the middle of the day, come what may, we've already had a good day. It's hard to have a bad day when you start off really well and you end really well. Does that make sense? I hope that, are you nodding online? I can't really tell. Uh, I hope that does make sense. So let's talk about it. I usually have a three-point message for you today. I only have a two-point message because it's evening and morning. So we're going to start off talking about the evening and your assignment or what God's intention about those evening hours uh, when it's dark. Uh, if you remember the little illustration, uh, there's, there's one thing especially above everything else that you need to do. Are you ready? Do you want to know what you're supposed to do in the evening? Look at your neighbor and say, get sleep. Everybody say, get sleep. Do you want 2021 to be better than 2020? Yeah. Me too. Get sleep. In fact, I would encourage you, you've only got seven days left in our 21 days of prayer, but I would encourage you even during that last week of our prayer and fasting, get sleep. I've, I've read this and studied this in the past about fasting, that one of the best things you can do when you're doing without food, when you're fasting, is to get extra sleep. Your body is rejuvenating itself. While it doesn't have, to, doesn't have to digest if you're not eating at all, now most of us are probably doing a Daniel fast, but I've noticed even with that, it seems like my body is renewing itself. And so one of the best things you can do is get some additional sleep. But if we would admit it, for many of us, that is difficult. You know why it's hard for us to get sleep? Hmm? It's not a trick question. You know why it's hard for us to get sleep? Two words. Oh, you know, that's good too. Carlton just held up his phone. That's, that's another reason that we have sometimes have trouble getting sleep. But, but the, the, one, the two words that I'm looking for are Thomas Edison. Can we get his picture on the screen? It's his fault. He's, he, he looks like he's at fault, doesn't he? He's the reason why we sometimes struggle getting enough sleep. In fact, in 1879, which was during his lifetime, the average American got 10 hours of sleep a night. 10 hours. Today, in 2021, the average American gets 6 hours and 51 minutes of sleep. That's significant. From 10 hours to less than 7 hours. And you know why that is? This right here. Because before Edison invented the light bulb, when it got dark, what are you going to do? Oh, you, you got a fire going and you cook your dinner and maybe you have a little conversation, but when the fire goes out, you go to bed <laughs> and you sleep. 
But today, since Edison, because of this, I can stay up, I can pull an all-nighter. Some of us have done that, not just when we were in college. I know some of us do that even because of pressures and stresses on our job. And well, I got to have this report ready. And so we stay up all night. This makes it possible for you to stay up all night. And I'm not even going to talk about computers and the blue light and all, some of those things that, that Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and others have brought onto us and how that's affected our sleep cycles. But I did some research and, and one study that I read from Sarah Mednick She's a Harvard grad and a sleep researcher. How would you like to have that job? A sleep researcher at the University of California, Riverside. And this is what she said. Studies have conclusively linked sleeplessness. When you don't get enough sleep, it affects, you. It affects irritability. You're not, you're not easy to get along with when you haven't had enough. Anybody notice that without a sleep study? I got both hands in the air, you know. We get, we get grumpy. It's associated with anger. It's associated with depression. And it's linked to mental exhaustion. All of that just because we didn't get enough sleep. We don't eat well. We're not in a good mood. We don't have much energy. And get this. I was shocked by this one. We're even more susceptible to sickness when we don't get enough sleep. They did a this was fascinating to me. They did a study with, uh, with some people for 14 days. They, asked, they didn't tell them what the study was about. They just said, for the next 14 days, I want you to record how much sleep you get and then report back to us. And when they reported back at the end of two weeks, the end of 14 days, those who had slept an average of seven hours or more every evening, they put them in, in a separate group. And those who slept for an average of less than seven hours, they put them in a different group. And both groups then, without being told this, they were being, when they came together and they're talking and spending a little time together, both groups were exposed to the rhinovirus. Now, that's not COVID. It's not very serious at all. That's the common cold. It just sounds better when I call it by its real name, the rhinovirus, okay? Thank you. I, I, I'll do anything to get a smile, you know? So they were exposed to the common cold, and get this. In the week or two that followed, the group that had slept less than seven hours a night were three times more likely to get the cold than the group that had slept for more than seven hours a night, even though they were both exposed to it at the same time. Isn't that amazing? That's the result of you not getting enough sleep. Uh, one article I read from the Wall Street Journal uh, was about a scientist who has studied this topic extensively, and he claims that a loss of four hours of sleep produces just as much impairment as drinking a six-pack of beer. In other words, he said, sleepy is just as dangerous as drunk. Can you imagine that? How would you like to be going in for surgery and, and you notice before you went in, the anesthesiologist was chugging down his last of six pack of beer. Do you want him putting you out? I don't think so. What about if you, if you uh, got on a plane and the pilot was finishing his sixth can of beer right before takeoff. How many of you would want to get off the plane and get on another flight? Yeah. But it's the same thing when you lose four hours of sleep. You're impaired just as much as the person drinking. You know what we should shoot for? Eight hours is what these studies indicated was what we especially need and actually they said top performers and I'm talking about in, in any field those that rise to the top they average 8 hours and 36 minutes and I'd like to be exceptional in my field so I'm going to try to start sleeping more I made up my mind when I studied this this isn't just for you this is for me I'm going to go to bed early in fact that's another thing that we found is uh, we set alarms for what time we need to get up I'm just curious, how many of you set an alarm, you know, to, to wake you up in the morning? Okay, that's, I'd say that's over half of us anyway. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But from everything that I read, what we need to be doing is setting alarms for what time to go to bed. Yeah. And, and go into it in the right way. We, we need to be winding down at the end of Is this making sense? 
you know? Instead of watching something on Netflix that, you know, some action film or something that's going to get us all hyped up and raise our blood pressure, and then we're going to try and go to bed and go, fall asleep, you know? Wind down. I've, start, I've done this for, I started to say I started, but I've done this for a number of years now. I try to read a book before I go to sleep. And what I found, the older I get, the, the fewer pages I get through before I'm dozing, you know. But it, do, it, it just kind of helps you to, you know, you're winding down when it's time. And so I would encourage you to do that and, and ramp down towards it. Otherwise, it's kind of like, uh, you know, turning on the heater in your car and rolling down the windows, you know. It sort of defeats the purpose, you know. Your, 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 your left shoulder, if you're the driver, your left shoulder is pretty cold while the rest of you is getting heat, you know. It's just, it's just you're defeating your own purpose. So let me, let me share one verse of Scripture from Psalm 127 and verse 2 where David said, It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know, talking about God now, he enjoys giving rest to those he loves. And I do want to take just a moment because I'm sure there's, there's probably been someone either in the room or online that is saying, Pastor, I've, I've tried all those things and I, I, I have insomnia. I just can't fall asleep. And the, the two or three times in my life where I've had that problem, it's, it, it's excruciating to just lay there and not be able to to fall asleep is, is, it is, it's excruciating. And I, I have compassion and I want, before we do anything else, I want to pray for those both in the room and online who struggle in this area. Uh, it's difficult for you to get adequate rest. It's difficult for you to fall asleep. Uh, this verse of scripture that I just read to you, in fact, mo I, the, the translation I used said he delights in giving his people, his beloved rest. But most translations I found just said he loves to give his people sleep. And if God feels that way, if he, if he enjoys giving you rest and giving you sleep, then it must be the enemy that's trying to keep you awake. And so I want to pray right now. Father, thank you for every person, every adult listening to this message who has struggled with insomnia, who has battled against it. Lord, I'm especially praying for those who have tried doing the right things, who have, who have practiced winding down, who have practiced uh, not being, uh, not being uh, jarred and, and their blood pressure rising from things that they've done late before going to bed. Lord, I'm praying especially for those who are doing their part and still have not been able to sleep properly. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would work a, a healing and a miracle in their lives, Lord. I pray that they would fall asleep tonight and sleep through the night and wake up rested in the morning, that you would be the one who gives them rest. In Jesus' name, amen. So in the evening, your job is to get sleep. Let's talk about in the morning now. In the morning, your job is to go deep. Everybody say, go deep. I'll tell you where I get that term a little bit later. But uh, when you wake up in the morning, whatever time that is, I think that's a great time for you to go deep. And, and what I'm talking about is going, to deep, going deep spiritually. That's the best time in the world. And I know I, I grew up too with now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take. You know, I don't know why we ever taught a child that prayer. Talk about scaring somebody, you know. You, if I die before I wake as a six-year-old, you know. Uh, so, so I know I was trained you pray at night like that, but I've learned over the years, for me at least, the very best time for me to pray is early in the morning. And I'll tell you why. Uh, well, for one reason, uh, that's an example that, that David, the man after God's own heart, provided. It's an example Jesus provided. And as I've read and studied some of the great uh, Christians and great ministers of the past, that was a practice, it seems like, for all of them. I've given you some verses about this in your notes. Psalm 57 and 8 and, and Psalm 108 and verse 2 is almost identical. Uh, it says, Rouse yourself, my soul. Arise, O harp and lyre. Let us greet the dawn with song. Now, if you're greeting the dawn, that must mean you're up before the sun is. Right? 
You're, you're there to greet it. When, when dawn breaks, you're there to greet it, but you're greeting it with worship, with a song. David said in Psalm 63 and 1, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. And Mark 1.35 says, In the morning, rising up a great while before sunrise, he, speaking of Jesus, went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And so my, my suggestion is that you would, that would be a great time for you to spend time in prayer. That'd be a great time for you to spend reading the scriptures. I'm talking about once you're awake. I'm not talking about when you're still half asleep. You know, get some coffee in you first if need be. But this is a great time to spend time with the Lord. It's also the best time for those baby steps. If you've set some goals for yourself this year, you know, you want to read a certain book or a number of books or you want to take an online class or whatever it is, this, this would be a great time for those baby steps. And here's why. It's, it's what I call uninterruptible time. Uninterruptible time. Because most of us, I don't have my phone now, but Carlton held his up earlier, and that is a distraction for most all of us because somebody's texting, somebody's calling, you know, we're dealing with that with all the dings and all the notifications. You need to turn those off, by the way. Turn off the notification. You don't need to know every time an email hits your inbox. It's probably spam anyway, <laughs> right? And, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I got lost. Oh, uninterruptible time. Uh, when I'm here at the office, this is not a complaint, but when I'm here at the office, uh, quite often people are stopping by and, and saying, Pastor, you got just a moment, you know, or, or I'm getting calls or whatever. But uninterrupted, at, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I don't have to worry that anybody's trying to get a hold of me. I don't have to be distracted. That uninterruptible time is the perfect time for me to go deep in whatever it is, whether I'm studying, whatever it is that I'm trying to do, it's the rest of the world, as far as I'm concerned, isn't even functioning yet. I don't have to worry about anybody else or anything else during that time. And I'm basing some of this on a book by Cal Newport called Deep Work. I don't know if you've read it or if you've even seen it, uh, but I read this a few years ago, and, uh, and he talks about the myth of multitasking. We oftentimes think that, that, you know, we are multi... We're doing more than one thing. We're taking advantage of the time, you know, because we're doing more than one thing at the same time. And he blows that out, out of the water. He says there's no such thing as multitasking, really. Uh, you think you're doing a thousand things at the same time, but really your brain is actually only able to do one thing at a time. He said what you're actually doing is going from one thing to another quickly and poorly. That's what you're actually doing. In fact, I, I, I can't explain all the technical aspects of it, but, uh, but he called it attention residue. He said, when you move from one thing to another, your brain actually leaves some hooks behind in where you just were so it can get back there if need be or whatever. It, it reminds me when I'm, you know, when I'm working on the Internet and I open up tabs and just leave them open, and after a while, you know, I've got 20 tabs open, 20 sites open on my computer, and I notice it's slowing down. It's not working very efficiently. Well, there's a reason, and that's exactly what you're doing to your brain. You're overloading it with all of these little hooks, I suppose. In fact, I can tell you one thing that... that uh, sort of proves that we, we don't really multitask. If you've ever, um, that maybe pre-GPS or maybe your GPS isn't always totally accurate, if you've ever not been able to find an address that you're looking for uh, and you realize that either you're lost or you need to concentrate, what's the first thing you do? Turn off the music in the car. Have you ever noticed that? It's just, inst I, it happened to me just a week, week or two ago. I, I was looking for an address and I just, I cut off the radio. Why? Because instinctually we know I need to concentrate now on finding this address and I don't want to be distracted by the music in the car or the, the radio or whatever it might be because our brain doesn't do different things at the same time. Alexander Graham Bell put it like this, Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work at hand. The sun rays do not burn until brought to a focus. I love that. We need to focus. That's what going deep means. And in order to do that, have a plan. Have a plan. I would encourage you. You know, you've only got one more week left, but I tell you, this, this 6 a.m. prayer with Church of the Highlands every morning has been wonderful. What a, what a great way to start your day. 
And so I encourage you, if you've, if you've missed the first 14, that's okay. Start tomorrow. Uh, Go.clc.tv slash 21 days, all together, no spaces. And you can join in and pray for an hour with us. It's, it's, it's awesome. But have a plan. Have a plan for what you're going to do. All of the experts say your brain functions best if you focus for about 60 to 90 minutes at one time and then move on to something else. So, so for, make up your mind. For one hour, I'm going to spend on this project. I'm going to spend on this book or this online class or reading God's Word, whatever it might be. And then I'll move on to something else, okay? Uh, have a plan because plan, having, failing to plan is planning to fail. We all know that. Ben Franklin, I read this just this week. Somebody told me about it and I looked it up. But Ben Franklin started every morning with a question. He asked himself, what good shall I do today? Don't you love that? I, I've, I've decided I'm going to adopt that every day. I want to start my day in prayer, but I want to start my day with what good works do I do? Will I do today? And then every evening... Before he went to sleep, he asked himself another question. He said, what good did I do today? And so, again, I've mentioned this before, but in closing, I would say, let's, let's not be thinking about morning to evening like we have in the past, but let's focus on evening to morning. Have a killer evening, winding down, getting the rest that you need, and then have a killer morning going deep with God and deep with whatever it is that you're focused on. And then in the middle of the day, come what may, it's going to be hard to have a bad day when it started so well and ended so well. Does that make sense? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for every person in the room and every person joining us online today. I pray that you would help us in these practical ways. Lord, you're the one that said the evening and the morning were the first day. And so you intended for us to get proper rest, but you also intended for us to be able to focus on the deep work that we need to accomplish. Every head bowed, every eye closed. It's really hard for you to have a good day without walking in your purpose fulfilling the very reason for which you were born. And it's hard to walk in your purpose without knowing the one who designed you, who made you. So really and truly, it all starts with knowing him. And so if you're here today in the room or if you're here joining us online and you're really not walking in your purpose because you don't know what it is, because you don't really have a close relationship with the one who created you. I'm giving you this, this moment, this time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak. And if I'm talking to someone who knows that you're not as close as you need to be, you're not as close as you want to be, today you'd like to surrender all of yourself to Jesus pray this prayer with me say something like Lord Jesus thank you for getting my attention today Lord I want to give you my whole life my whole heart I'm asking you to come in right now wash me from every sin and fill me with your Holy Spirit I want to serve you the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Thank you for forgiving my sin. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you welcome Carlton as he comes to close our service? Amen, amen. Um, I, I, I don't want to miss the point that for those of you that have prayed that prayer, you have changed your eternity. You have invited God into your life to be the Lord over your life, over your day and over your night. So if you have prayed that prayer, we here at CLC want to help you with the next steps of your life. Um, text the word LIFE to 708-998-4516. Text LIFE to 708-998-4516. Wasn't that an awesome message? 
That was the greatest sermon I have ever heard in my life because my senior pastor told me to get some sleep. And you don't have to wait till the new year. It doesn't have to be a new year's resolution. You can go to sleep as soon as you leave church. And that's exactly what I'm going to do because it's so amazing. Um, we want to transition now to, uh, to, to the announcements part of the service. Um, we have uh, many ways for you to give uh, to CLC and the mission that we are partnering with here. Um, there are multiple ways to give. I think there are three ways to give. They're on the screen there. There's the app, there's online, and then there's text to give as well. Uh, we do have offering boxes in the back of the auditorium and outside in the lobby if you want to uh, put your offering in the box. Um, the other thing is that uh, I'm excited for our biggest conference of the year that's coming at the end of the month. Our first love conference is going to be awesome. Uh, January 29th to the 31st um, is going to be here at CLC um, and is going to be streaming live online. It's going to be amazing. Uh, if you need information about what's going on here at CLC, you can subscribe to our newsletter. Our newsletter goes out every week where you can get information about what's happening here at CLC. And to subscribe to the newsletter, you can go, you can go to go.clc.tv slash newsletter, forward slash newsletter. Um, another exciting event that we have here at CLC is the Walk Through the Bible event. Um, that will be February 6th, Walk Through the Bible. We saw the video before Pastor Jerry spoke. The Walk Through the Bible event is going to be extremely exciting. We're going to get some practical knowledge about what the Old Testament is and how we can read and study it better. Uh, register for the event. Go to go.clc.tv forward slash walk. And as Pastor Jerry mentioned, we are in 21 days of prayer. Uh, it's January 3rd to the 23rd, so we still got some time left for you to partner with us and join with us in prayer every morning at 6 a.m. Uh, for more information, you can go to, again, I keep saying go to, go.clc.tv forward slash 21 days. That's one word, go.clc.tv forward slash 21 days. Um, and if you have any prayer request, our text number is the same for all these things. Welcome if you are a new uh, visitor, if you're a new guest. Life, if you have received Jesus into your life. And prayer, if you need prayer. Prayer, uh, you can text the word prayer to 708-998-4516. And uh, I'll ask all of you all to stand uh, as we dismiss service. Um, please follow the ushers as we will be dismissing by row. Um, raise your hand and receive. I'll pray a blessing over your lives. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his, his favor and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that we believe